Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, with Elizabeth Warren, it is who it, you know, it is what it is. I, I can't say I disagree with anything she said today. So therefore, I, you know, it's probably not best for me to be petty and say I don't, I just don't want to hear from her. But I just don't want to hear from her. I don't, I don't, I don't, because I don't know. It's like you really know the character of a person when they stand up in a real fight, something that's going to cost them, cost them something that puts them at risk. And um, she, you know, these grandstanding moments, even though she's 100% right, this is still a grandstanding moment that is no skin off of her back. It actually helps her. It makes her look, look great. Um, the real fight, there was only one, this is what it is. There was only one real fight for uh, Elizabeth Warren as a progressive, and that was the fight against Hillary Clinton, and she chose not to fight that. And, you know, um, to each his own. I don't want, you know, everybody's not willing to fall on their sword. Everybody's not going to be as crazy as Bernie Sanders was. I get it. Hey, you know, and maybe she, you know, she feels like she can do more with her chairmanships and, but you know, all that other kind of stuff. But, um, but at the end of the day, there was only one real fight for Elizabeth Warren, and that was the fight against uh, Hillary Clinton that she chose not to not to take. All right, let's take this caller, 857-600-0518. Caller, you're live on the air. What's your name, comment, and or question? Hey, Benjamin, this is uh, Steve over in Washington. Uh, my only comment is about Elizabeth Warren, and I think it was on your show a couple weeks ago or months ago. Uh, you had talked about how important it was for progressives to have power to be able to make the change, like yep. to be in positions of power to be able to make change. Yep. And I think Elizabeth Warren, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously just guessing at this, but I think she understands that and wasn't willing to fall on the sword, mm -hmm. knowing that she would lose a really important position to be able to even have the platform to talk about those things on a national level. And that's why I think, yeah, even though I was disappointed in her during the primary, mm -hmm. I think I understand why, because it's very hard to get a progressive into a position of power. Uh, but doesn't that, at that kind of level. So, but doesn't that, no, I mean, and I agree with you, right? I'm, I listen, I already started off the conversation saying I'm, I'm being petty about it. I'm probably just being a, an asshole about it. <laughs> uh, but, but doesn't it, I mean, doesn't it make you want to dig in and fight more to realize that it is a it's political suicide to challenge or to just endorse somebody else? Right. I get it. She didn't want to run against Hillary Clinton. I got it. But, you know, she was afraid to endorse Bernie Sanders. Right. And, and it should make us upset that the um, vindictiveness of the Clinton machine is such that people won't even, in, uh, you know, you can't even endorse. I mean, look what they're doing to uh, Nina Turner, right? They're blackballing Nina Turner. And to me, that should make us like want to double down. I, I guess I'm just a different person. Like if you threaten me, I'm not going to back down. If you threaten me, I'm going to double down and I'm coming for you with everything I have. But maybe that's why I'm not in politics now. <laughs> Thanks for the call, man. You're absolutely yeah. right. I agree with you. I right, thank you. All right. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, if somebody threatens me, I'm, it's not in me to um, not step up and take the challenge.